This question is an application of the principle of moments. We learned this concept in Mechanics 2 and I will use it to show you how we arrive at the solution to the question. To begin with, let's read the question together. We are told that a uniform rigid plank has a mass of 10 kilograms and a length of 4 meters. Before we go very far, let's analyze this information. The term uniform is used here by the examiner to tell you that the center of mass of this plank is at the geometrical center of the plank. If this plank is 4 meters, it has a length of 4 meters from here to here. We are supposed to divide that length by 2 in order to, to get this point where its center of mass is located. The weight of the plank will act through this point. Now, why do we need the weight of the plank? The weight of the plank is one of the forces which is acting on this plank. That is why we need to know its value and to know exactly at what point it is acting. So it is acting 2 meters from this end or 2 meters from this other end. The rest of the question goes as follows. The plank has 0 0.9 meters of its length in contact with the horizontal platform. A man M of mass 75 kg stands on the end of the plank which is in contact with the platform. So that man stands at the edge of this plank at this point and the plank is in contact with this platform. A child C of mass 25 kg walks onto the overhanging part of the plank because this region here and the plank is the child is located at this point. Now find the distance between the man and the child when the plank is, is on the point of tilting. So let's assume that this plank is at the point of tilting when the child is here. We are required to calculate this distance. MC is the distance that we need. Now how do we go about that? There is one other piece of information other than the, the mention of the uniform plank and it is found here that the plank is on the point of tilting. When we've been told that it is in the point of tilting, we know that it is in equilibrium and we can go right ahead and use the principle of moments. That is one important fact which is provided by, by this statement, that the plank is in equilibrium and we can go right ahead and use the principle of moments. The other piece of information that is provided by this sentence here, that the plank is on the point of tilting, is this. If the plank is at the point of tilting, it will tilt or turn about this point. So that means that the rest of the plank in this direction, although it is just in contact with the platform, the platform is not exerting any force on it along this point other than this point. So the point which this platform exerts on the plank, the supporting force, because it is the plank which supports it, acts through this point. So let's look at a diagram that gives us more information on this. And this is the diagram that we need. So this shows the point, the, the center of mass of the plank. And this arrow shows the weight of the plank. This arrow shows the weight of this man here. While this arrow shows the weight of this child. We are supposed to draw another arrow here pointing vertically upwards. So at this point, we are going to draw this arrow pointing vertically upwards. And it is the force which is exerted by this point or by the platform on the plank. It is the normal component of the contact force, R, acting that way. So there are four forces which are acting on this plank. So this is the weight of the plank. It will be that when we are given the mass of an object, we can get its weight by multiplying its mass in kilogram by the value of the gravitational field strength. So the weight of the plank will be 10 times g because its mass is 10 kilograms. So we multiply it by g to get its weight in newtons. The weight of the man will be 75 times g again in newtons. 
while the weight of this child will be 25 g newtons. We are going to take this as the turning point. So let's call this point O. Point O. The system is going to turn about point O. And we've got this force and this force tending to turn the system in the clockwise direction, this way. While the weight of the man tends to turn the system anti-clockwise, in that direction. So we need this distance. All distances are measured from the turning point and all distances make 90 degrees with the line of action of the force. And all distances make 90 degrees with the line of action of the force. So we need this distance. Since this distance from this point to this point is 2 meters, this must be 1.1. How did I get 1.1? I simply subtracted 0 0.9 from 2. And then we need this other distance from this point to this point. Let's call it D because we don't know how much it is. After all, when we get D, we are supposed to add it up onto 0 0.9 in order to get the required distance from M all the way to point C. Because that is what we have been asked to calculate here. Now, let's take moments about point O. So, so take moments about point O, we have the sum of clockwise moment about point O is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment about the same point, anti-clockwise moment about that point. So the clockwise moment is due to the weight of the plank which is 10g times 1.1 because that is how far it is from point O plus 25g times D because again that is how far this force is from this point and of course the last one which tends to turn the system in the anti-clockwise direction will be the weight of the man, 75 g newtons times how far it is from point O, 0 0.9. This one will give us, of course, we are going to have the values of g's cancelling out throughout. And we are going to have 11 plus 25 d is equal to this one will give us 67.5 and we can see that our D is going to be after we subtract 11 we are going to get 56.5 divided by 25 and our D will be equal to 2.26 meters. That means the required distance, which is from this point, from this point all the way to this point, we can call that distance x. We can be able to see that our value of x is equal to 2.26 plus 0 0.9. And this one will give us 3. 0.16 meters.